Hello guys, welcome to ruling-academy.com. As we know in ruling, there are two commonly used well-cue methods for well control with the root string in the hole. They are the ruler's method and the weight and weight method. This video in slow motion will explain you the fundamental basis of the first method, which is the ruler's method. As we know, there are two circulations in ruler's method. These graphs over here are showing you the pressure development and progress on the casing pressure gauge and drill pipe pressure gauge in accordance with the choke control and the, run, the pump speed at Q rate. The casing pressure gauge is in the purple graph, the drill pipe pressure gauge is, is in the green graph, and the pump speed is in the red graph. The first circulation, as Depicted in here is to circulate the influx out of the annulus by using the pressure much in the well. You can start circulating right away while doing your calculation and mixing the q -mut. This will minimize the chance of gas percolation. The, circulation, the second circulation, as starting from stage number four here to the end, is to displace the entire well with q -mut and to regain the overbalance of hydrostatic pressure with the mud, the q -mud in the well bore against formation pressure. So this method does not require much initial calculation. However, it takes more time on choke, and casing pressure will be higher than the casing pressure on the weight and weight method. And now, to make it easy for following through, I make this video in slow motion mode, and I'll break the two circulations into stages with highlights of what to be done and what to be expected on case in pressure gaze and group by pressure gaze. Now let's start. All right, here are some basic information prior to starting the first circulation. The, the shutting procedure is hard shutting, the choke is closed. We open the HCR valve or choke to get pressure readings. And here are all the well record depth in measure depth, TVD. <coughs> Sorry, leak of test, mud weight and leak of test, mud weight in the, in the well, the pressure mud weight in the well, certain case in pressure, certain drip by pressure, pit again, BHA size and configuration, annulus capacity, drill string capacity, drill collar capacity, the SCR. The slow circulating pump rate, this is not the must to have. This is nice to have, but you can live without it. We'll come to this point later. You have surface line volume, and you need to work it out into your stroke. You have pump output capacity, and for the subsea guys, don't forget your choke line, friction loss, water depth, air gap, and what's in choke and Q lines. And here are a few basic calculations for the Q for the for, for in the well. The Q mud weight by this formula, the ICP equals the SCR slow circulating pump rate of the riser plus certain drill pipe pressure. All right. And if you forget to take SCR, what shall it be? It shall, ICP shall be whatever register on the drill pipe pressure gauge after you have reached Q rate in the first circulation. And FCP by this formula also related to SCR of the riser, right? So if you don't have SCR, then it is whatever is shown on the drill by pressure gauge after your q mud has reached the bit. And then you also need to work out your mass by using these formulas here. Take a look at that, all right? And for sub C guys, take into account the choke line friction loss. You take the SCR of the riser, deduct the SCR of the choke line to get the choke line friction loss. And it, this choke line friction loss will come into play in dynamic mass. All right. You have to you take just your mass, deduct the choke line friction loss to get the dynamic dynamic mass. And if your choke and kill line contains glyco or seawater, which is lighter than mud, then you know that your mass will be increased on the amount of delta P by this formula here, all right? So while bringing the pumps up to kill rate, 
you have to take choke line friction loss off the casing pressure gauge. And when you are bringing the pump down, you put choke line friction loss back in. To simplify this one, you can stick with the pressure gauge on the Q line, then you don't bother the choke line friction loss. And now for calculating mass and the increment of mass delta P by having different lighter fluid in the choke and Q lines, I have made another video. I got another video dedicated for mass calculation for surface BOP and subsea BOP. Please refer to that video for more information and calculation. All right, now, before we start, a few things we need to note down here. Look at these two gauges, the drill pipe gauge and the case and pressure gauge. On case and pressure gauge here, the red needle is for the surface BOP, and the black needle here is for the subsea BOP. We need to mark down a few figures for easy monitoring. First, we mark down the initial shift in case and pressure. Then we need to mark down mass. And for subsea guys, we mark down mass, deduct choke line friction loss, and certain in case and pressure deduct choke line friction loss. And finally, we also need to mark down the value of certain drill pipe pressure on case and pressure gauge. Okay. Now move on to the drill pipe pressure gauge. We need to mark down initial certain drill pipe pressure. We mark down ICP, initial circulating pressure, and FCP, final circulating pressure. Determine your kill rate based on your, uh, your, your SCR, your slow circulating rate. All right, and on your graph here, these are the figures. Stage one, we will bring the pumps up to, to kill rate. Now, oh, I'm sorry, one more note about the lag time. We know that the choke control is on the back side, on the inner side of the well. So therefore, there is no lag time between choke control and case and pressure gauge. Every choke adjustment will almost instantly show on the case and pressure gauge. But for the drill by pressure gauge, every choke adjustment will take a lag time. The lag time is one second per 1,000 feet traveling along the well path. So it is, it is if you take the, the measure depth of the well, all right, in feet, double it up and divide it by 1,000, you will have the lag time for reaction on drill bar pressure gauge of choke adjustment. So lag time on drill bar pressure gauge is quite long. Be patient with it. Now we're ready to go on to first circulation. The stage number one is to bring the pumps up to kill rate. In this process here, we stick with the case and pressure gauge. We, we, open, we bring up the pump five or 10 strokes per minute, and then we open the choke a little bit, try to keep about 50 to 100 psi above initial shut in case and pressure. Remember for subsea guys, take choke line friction loss off it. All right? This is to control the overbalance against formation pressure. What to, what to expect on drill pipe pressure? Drill pipe pressure, guys, is expected to rise from initial certain drill pipe pressure here all the way up to initial circulating pressure here. All right, now let's look at these graphs. See, pump speed increase, drill pipe pressure increase from initial certain drill pipe pressure up to initial circulating pressure. We try to control case in pressure at about 100 or 50 psi above initial circulating pressure. After we have reached kill rate, whatever is shown on the drill pipe pressure gauge will be your ICP. So in case you forgot to take your SCR before, now you have your ICP shown on here, ICP in here. And if you take this ICP, deduct your certain drill pipe pressure, you will have your slow circulating pump rate, easy. Now we continue to pump. Move on to stage number two. When we, we stick with the drill pipe pressure gauge at this stage, because nothing is changed inside drill pipe, inside string, it's just mud. So we know that the drill pipe pressure gauge will be constant at around, certain, uh, at around initial circulating pressure. And what do we expect to see on casing pressure? As we keep pumping, we are moving the influx, the gas bubbles up to surface. As gas is moving up the surface, 
we, the pressure is increasing. We open the choke to bleed up the volume inside the, inside the, the, the well to reduce the pressure. But we try, while the influx is still above, below the shoe, we try to keep the casing pressure below the mass or mass deduct choke line friction loss for subsidiary. Because if we exceed this value mass, we have big chance of breaking down the shoe. All right? We have losses. We don't want that. So when the influx reaches up to the surface here, we expect to see casing pressure max out. Right? These graphs here are showing that idea. So when the influx is above shoe, shoe is here. When influx is above shoe, we are not concerned by mass anymore. Right. We are only concerned by mass while the influx is below shoe. We keep casing pressure below mass. All right. And now when gas is up a surface, we continue to pump to get mass into choke and tear manifold to the poor point and out of the well. All right. So we keep pumping. We know that inside spring there is nothing, just mud. So we know drill by pressure will be constant at ICP, initial circulating pressure. And now when mass, when sorry, when gas is going through the choke and tube manifold, you will hear gas blowing sound in the choke and tube manifold. You will see the, the casing pressure gauge drop down dramatically. You need to do is, what you need to do is close the choking, all right? So let's see the graph, how it progresses. See, casing pressure gauge drops down drastic, dramatically, drastically, yeah? Drew bar pressure is constant, pump speed is constant. You, you close the choking to keep the back pressure in the annulus here to maintain overbalance against formation pressure. So, so after this one stays here, we you can continue pumping a little bit more, okay, to ensure all gas is out. You know, we know that nothing is in the drip pipe, just much, so we know drip pipe pressure will be constant while we keep pumping. Now, gas is out, just only much in the annulus, so we know the case and pressure will be constant at last shown value, which is the certain drip pipe pressure. All right, so when the gas is out of the well, we know, we know, and we see case and pressure gauge drop. And it will drop down to minimum at shunt and drew by pressure value, this value here. All right. So now this is the end of stage number one. Now, if you wish to shunt on the pump, what you need to do is close the choke back in first and then bring the pump down five ten stroke per minute. Try to keep about 50 to 100 psi above this figure, shunt and drew by pressure here. The last shown, the last regi register figure on the case in pressure. Okay, and then, then you will see your drip by pressure gauge also start dropping down to drip by certain drip by pressure. All right, you keep doing that until you completely shut the well. But if your cumulant is ready, you can go ahead and pump it down, or you know it doesn't take long for cumulant to run it, you can keep pumping now. Your cumulant is ready. You can go ahead and pump it down. Move into the next circulation. All right, this is stage number five. We start the second second circulation. We pump cumulant down the real screen at Q rate. Q rate. We know now the heavier mud is filling up inside the real screen. So the real pipe pressure gauge will drop from ICP to FCP. This is what will happen on group by pressure gauge. Okay, we leave the choke alone at the last position. We don't need to touch it. All right. And remember the surface line volume. Work the surface line volume out into stroke. Okay, number of stroke. So after the number of stroke of the surface line volume, you reset the stroke counter. Then, then you count. You start counting stroke from the top at RKB level down to the bit. All right, now we know in the annulus there is just O oh, much. So nothing changed in the annulus. We, then we expect to see case in pressure gauge to be constant at last shown value, which is the certain drew by pressure value. 
So this graph is progressing along that tail rate. Two bar pressure rates drops from ICP to FCP. Phase in pressure gauge is constant. Pump speed is constant. All right, so after the equipment has reached the bit, it starts to keep pumping, it will get into the annulus. What do we expect to say? We expect to say phase in pressure gauge start dropping down. How much does it drop in there? There's a drop down here. It will drop down gradually to zero when the cumulus reaches surface. What about drill bar pressure? Drill bar pressure inside the drill string now is only cumulus. So we expect nothing is changed with drill bar pressure. It will be constant at final circulating pressure. So now cumulus is filling up any less. Case and pressure, uh, pressure gauge drops, drill bar pressure gauge is constant. All right. So now, cumulus is up to surface. We continue to pump just to ensure that cumulus is all the way around. So as we continue to pump a bit more, we expect to see drill bar pressure constant here yeah, from six to seven. And case and pressure is already zero. Now, when we are sure human is all the way around, we shut down the pump, then we will see drill bar pressure rays drop all the way down to zero. So this is the end of the second circulation. We have human all the way around. Now we can shut the pump down. We open the choke. We flow check the well on choke line. If no flow shows, we go ahead, open up the well and resume our operation. All right, guys. I thank you and I hope you guys have fun and enjoy this video. This is all the basis and principle of the ruler's method. I hope this slow mode does help you get a thorough view of how things happen and what to be expected to see and hear. In reality, it is much slower than this slow mode, unfortunately, and it requires your patience, especially to see real prior pressure based reaction after your, your adjustment on the choke time consuming process but that's all it is that's all it takes time stay calm and play on i hope this video is useful for you all and any questions any comment any discussion if you like please drop me an email see you soon in the next video